Hi. Hey. What's up? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Hot Button Banter. I'm your host, Anari. I'm Gambo. And we are so excited to be here and to have y'all here with us. Today, we're going to shoot and talk about our very first episode. Woo! Woo! It's so crazy. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit about Hot Button Banter. We're a new podcast that's focusing on controversial, riveting, hot topics about intersexuality, gender, identity, race, religion, the whole nine yards about how we fit into this big world that we live in. Yes, yes. And today's episode, episode number one, we're going to be discussing who we are so you can get to know us, we can get to know you, and we're also going to be discussing relationship hygiene. Yes, ma'am. So, go ahead, stay tuned, listen up, and let's get into it. Yes, but wait, before we start, Anari, why should we even care about you and about me? Who are you? Anari. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she answers like a nun. Just one one answer. Anari. That's all you need to know. (laughs) No, my name's Anari, and I'm from the DMV, D.C., Maryland, Virginia. Not the Department of Motor Vehicles. For whatever reason, people (laughs) seem to think that because I'm from the DMV, that I was born in the Department of Motor Vehicles. And for a time there, I started to believe in myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lie to you. I thought it was that <laughs> for a very long time myself. So, no. <laughs> Stacy, Maryland, Virginia. That's where I'm from. Specifically, I'm from Maryland. Fort Washington, Maryland. Because not too many people know where that's from. I'm just going to go with D.C. So <laughs> Wow, she ain't even from the city, y'all. I'll just get it. I'll just get it. I'll just get it. I was born in D.C., but I grew up in Fort Washington, Maryland. How about you? Where are you from? Um, I, I'm actually from the city. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) My name is Gambo. I am from Chicago, from the south side to be specific. And I've been here in L.A. for a few years now working as an artist. Uh, So I'm a musician, a singer, songwriter, actor, model on occasion. Hire me. I do not dance. That will never, ever be a thing. So don't ever ask. Don't ask. (laughs) But I'm here with Anari to talk about how we see ourselves in society. Her and I and our other friends spend a lot of time talking about these subjects. And so we figured... Why not set up that podcast gear and get it going? We did figure that, and here we are. <laughs> here we are. So let's get on right into it. Let's not waste a second. Um, so first off, we're going to talk about relationship hygiene or dating hygiene, however you like to look at it. Some of you guys are afraid of relationships. It's time to get real with yourself. <laughs> um, but Anari, what does relationship hygiene mean to you? Relationship hygiene. Yes. I think that a relationship hygiene essentially means that you should be more clean in your mind about what it is and who it is you want and what you want to do. I think that relationship hygiene ties a lot into mindset, too, because a lot of people jump into relationships ignoring discrepancies with people Mm. (laughs) red flags if you will there are a lot of those and i think that people hop into these relationships ignoring the red flags thinking that the person that they're with is just so attractive that they can scurry on by it but in reality they're developing an attachment to someone that they know like in their intuition isn't right for them and they still ignore those important conversations or ignore those important thoughts if you're in a dating pool and you're having doubt in the beginning of that dating pool yeah from the start from the start yeah it's just creaky foundation it's like it just feels iffy nine times out of ten is that probably not for you <laughs> i think that we should pay more attention to 
a person, the person, instead of how that person looks, instead of getting the halo effect. I say that because when we have prospects for friends that we don't find attractive, we pay more attention to that person's personality and how it fits in their lives before we pay attention to the person that we're trying to date's personality and how it fits in our lives. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that that's yeah. the... That's where things kind of get blurry because when you're trying to date somebody, you're going off of how they look, how they look with you, if they really like you. You're not asking yourself if you actually like them. So <laughs> until you don't, and then until you don't, <laughs> but then you're attached. So, <laughs> so I think dating hygiene, relationship hygiene, all of that. I think that all ties into just how you see it, how you should be seeing it, how you should be thinking about it how clean your mindset should be. I know we, we've talked before about rose-colored glasses when you really kind of just seeing every everything that this person does is so nice and so great. And you're like, I love him or I love her. <laughs> and like, it's just, <laughs> and it, like they can do no wrong because everybody's not perfect or I can fix them. <laughs> and <laughs> that's a, you know, it, it definitely has its cons it definitely has its points where it doesn't always work out the way that we hope and the way that we think and i think that's a good point about entering things from the start with a clear-headed view point of view and with just with like kind of not just an open mind but uh um like having a goal in mind where you are kind of your intentions are set Mm -hmm. You know what you will stand for. You know what you won't stand for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the way I'm interpreting what you're saying. Is It sounds like a very clean and fresh way to do things. Mm -hmm. Very different than I feel like we probably did <laughs> in our 20s, well, earlier in our 20s. We're still in our 20s. Don't worry. Don't listen to her. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. I am 25. <laughs> Black don't crack. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um <laughs> No, I'm 20. Well, we were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm 25. She's 42. <laughs> <laughs> when we were in our younger 20s, maybe college age, 21 or 20 or 18, 19, it makes me think about what I see is is dating hygiene, and I really see it as first and foremost when I think about it, <clears throat> I think of myself, and I think of where I stand in these relationships, where my self worth sits, where my identity sits with being a bisexual woman. Also, I consider myself sapiosexual as well. So where I, I see my identity in that spectrum of sexuality as well, but just kind of being honest with myself that, you know, I'm not all perfect all the time. I'm not all, all the way together, but how can I show up as my best self? Mm -hmm. Especially now as I get older, because when I was younger, I'll be ghosting people. I'll hit the deuces, disappear, and be out immediately if there was something I didn't like or if, if something I didn't I saw or if I found out that, you know, maybe they were dating other people and I didn't like it. Well, bye. You missed out on a good one. And, you know, as I get older, that's like, it's not always the best response to things. Like, some things deserve a hard conversation. Some things deserve sitting down and really getting through it so that you both don't go on to the next person and the person after that doing the same things, repeating the same cycle mm -hmm. and having the same type of reactions to confrontation that you had when you were 18. Why are you not growing? And I had to ask myself that. And like you said, I had to clean up my act. And I'm still cleaning up my act. God, oh my God, I am not there all the way yet. Mm. But I start to think about these things more as I get older. And I start to think about what used to really work for me back in my more erratic stages of dating. That, that toxic love, that toxic mess it used to be used to be kind of fun. I won't lie. I won't <laughs> lie. I promise I'm better, y'all. But, like, it was a little bit fun. Like, we find that roof, Chris, on my birthday. Wow. <laughs> like, ooh, I feel alive. Ooh, <laughs> she talking to somebody else, too. Ooh. <laughs> I got to say okay. something. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Mm, I could cheat back. Who could play that game? Who could play that game? Oh, they want to see the real devil? <laughs> 
I got something for her. No, <laughs> like, very man. But I'll yeah. be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Like, why are we going back to the same person? It's clearly, it's like clearly not working. Like he said, you know, if you can't have these conversations, what are we doing here? But I, I do think there's just internal conversations that we can be having with ourselves, which is a, a big part of this hot button banter podcast, where it brings the internal conversations that we individually have outside into these topics that may be kind of like hard to talk about and kind of controversial to say. We might have some opinions that are some people might disagree with. And it is what it is. It because, is. you know, if it's coming from a place of introspection where you're really starting to look at yourself in the mirror, I feel like we discover a lot of things and then we go out in the world and we start to do better, which is a goal of mine. I will agree. It's definitely a goal of mine, too. I think the feeling of needing toxicity kind of derives from the Twilight and Vampire Diary era mm. of our generation. <laughs> we found it was a little bit spicy. <laughs> that man was old as hell talking to that young little girl. There's no reason <laughs> why that old ass man was still in high school. Girl, let me get my tea. Twilight, disrespectful. And we were feeding into that. I wanted, I wanted that toxicity like Twilight <laughs> and did. like Vampire Diaries, especially Damon. Damon, yo, I inspired to be like Damon. But then when I look back at it, I'm like, okay, Twilight Diary, uh, Twilight <laughs> Vampire Diary. Might as well been the name. It might as well. <laughs> that shit was actually pretty crazy because they were over a hundred years old, still in high school, dating fourteen year olds. Let's be for real. <laughs> 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 Was it wrong if they were under, when well, they got frozen at that age? You can so get just living in a cycle. You can get frozen at that age and still grow mentally. A lot of adults. <laughs> no, you're right. That's just looking weird. A lot of adults are still 14 mm-hmm. in their heads, but they're. 45 <laughs> like, childish childish, childish. <laughs> do not grow at all i'm pretty certain damon and old boy from twilight grew a little bit <laughs> i think they, they knew a little bit of something of something they knew what the fuck they was doing was wrong <laughs> they he did learn how to manipulate her at least in twilight i didn't i didn't really watch too many of vampire diaries but too many episodes of vampire diaries but in twilight he definitely Knew how to manipulate her. The only two characters in that show that made sense was the two vampires that was in high school, but they was dating each other. They <laughs> <laughs> actually the four. It was four of them. Were they related though? I don't remember if they were related. I know they was dating though. Well, I don't know. They, it was a lot of problematic things going on around that time, 2012, mm-hmm. 2014. So all I can say is Edward could have got it from me um ha, 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 ha. and um, <laughs> top tier soundtrack if i say so myself <laughs> not a team edward you wildin'. i was team edward all the way you wildin this during jacob, my mm. you wildin jacob <laughs> i was team jacob this during my straight phase yeah okay Notice i said phase <laughs> i was team jacob all the way but now he did have long luscious hair well <laughs> speaking of sexuality i would like to start our next topic talking about our sexualities and our views on dating within those sexualities let's get into it let's get in let me grab my cup sexuality Mm -hmm. interesting Mm -hmm. what is your sexuality did you say you were bisexual and sapiosexual oh yes yeah i I identify as a bisexual woman and also sapiosexual so her and her boyfriend are having a nice time (laughs) <laughs> is gonna see this and be like, girl, no more <laughs> take the mic away from her. <laughs> Bring her home. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, we, we're chilling, we're chilling. I guess I would classify myself as a baby bisexual. You know, there's a lot that I still have to learn about being in the queer community that I learned from my good friend, Anari here. What do you identify as? Let's get into it. I'm a lesbian. Um... <laughs> I like women. Mm. At one point, I was bisexual as well. And another point, I was straight. Or have I always been straight? (laughs) (laughs) This is just a facade. (laughs) Maybe this is a phase. How do you feel about dating within your sexuality? Is it a a smiley face? As a gay? Or is it a 
a, a frowny, frowny face. face. <laughs> How do I feel of dating and my sexuality? Yeah. I think that it's an interesting way of dating. No, I've always I've always dated my sexuality, so I guess it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't count anything from teenage years. They don't count. Even um, experimentation. See, experimentation. Even some of the women. I <laughs> experimentation. Teenage dating don't count. But <laughs> I'm sure some people will argue like, "Oh my god, that was the love of my life." I'm sure. Are y'all still together? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was too controversial. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, dating in my sexuality has always been, I guess you could say it's a little bit more challenging dating women. It's not as easy as men can be. No offense. <laughs> No of it, no of it, no of it, no of it, no of it. I think that dating women is a little bit more intricate. Like you really gotta, you really gotta think about what you're gonna say. I can tell you now that there are certain things that I would not accept if someone approached me, and I know there's certain things that women, other women, wouldn't accept if you approach them. Where it so it becomes a little bit more challenging. Also, deciphering whether someone is gay or not, or lesbian. I'm at that age where I can kind of tell. There's little sudden cues that you can tell if someone really likes women, if they're bisexual, queer, lesbian. Like, they're certain. It's so hard for me to tell. I literally never know. Well, I mean, unless it's like outward. I've been gay for so long. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got an OG over here. I got to figure out if someone's lesbian or not, if I care enough to do so when I first approach you, like sometimes when I was younger, I wouldn't, I would just approach you. I don't care. You're going, you're going to tell me whether or not somewhere in the conversation, if you like women or not. Mm -hmm. So yeah. since I do that still, but I do pay attention a little bit more on whether or not I already know if they're going to say that they like girls, it kind of helps you navigate the conversation a little bit easier. If you actually can tell a little bit of whether or not they like girls. And I'm not saying that people are obvious with the way they are, but there's certain cues that women will give that you can go off of if they do like girls. Yeah, I was going to say, please, please tell me. Like, I need to get my gaydar up. Well, one of those cues is flirting. Even if she isn't lesbian or if she isn't bisexual, this is a thing that women do if they find you attractive, especially if they're in the same room as you. They'll look at you, and they'll look at you for a minute. And then when you look at them, they'll look away really quick. It's simple. It's like simple flirting cues like that. It's normal flirting cues even between men and women, where it's like, but oh, men you do not pick up on that. They just be like, <laughs> well, obviously she wants me. <laughs> or they'll be like, well, I didn't notice that. And it's like, well, that's me flirting. It's like, <laughs> like I'm looking. Hello. Come over. <laughs> but that's, that's a little subtle cue that you're like, oh, okay, she might be. She might be something on the spectrum. I don't know what, but she might be something because she's looking at me. Even if she's a little curious, she's looking at me. So I can go over there and have a conversation <laughs> with her and <laughs> shoot a shot a little, ask a few questions, see what's going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, for me, it's it's been harder um, over, like, in my life. Like, I've always thought girls were pretty and then I started talking to a couple girls before right now I'm, I've been in a long-term relationship for about five plus years so I'm not talking about right now but before that relationship in my former years um, I found it kind of harder or the girls that I have talked to have always approached me hmm. like hey I think you're cute or you're interesting let's get to know each other but I've never approached any girls and um you know, me, me and Anari are friends, so we spend a lot of time together. Um, some might even say we live together. And we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's seen me struggle on different occasions where uh, there's an opportunity where it, it might be more obvious, where I didn't notice it, but she did. And I, I, she, she'll, she'll let me know, like, hey, yeah, I think that person might have been feeling you. And I'm like... Really? I just thought they, they just said my outfit was cute. Like, I just thought <laughs> thought I had that shit on today. I don't know. What that <laughs> thought I was on one. Uh, ew, thought I had it on. But then, you know, when I think back, I'm like, oh, wow, that's what that was. I'm speaking to bisexuality in my experience right now versus men. 
I got it out the bag. Like, it's okay. Like, I can shoot my shot. My relationship right now came from me shooting my shot, which I don't do often. But when I do it, I feel like I can do it. And I don't feel as self-conscious mm. as I would talking to a woman. Probably subconsciously because of those things that you were saying where it's like women know women and sometimes women don't want to be approached yeah that's the hard part with women is sometimes (laughs) women just really don't want to be approached and you got to decipher whether or not she (laughs) want to be approached or not as a woman like i know some women like some lesbians or queer people don't give a fuck they're going to approach you anyway like guys i'm not saying that we're all the same me personally i just i feel I feel the same way as other women do sometimes when it's like, I just don't want to be approached. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and I'm real. good. I'd You're be good. Well. <laughs> you might feel bloated or whatever it is. It's and valid. It's, you got to, like, navigate around that. You really got to pay attention to whether or not she do want to be approached. And mm-hmm. you have to care if she do or don't, if you decide to go that route. Like, how badly do you want to approach her? <laughs> is it worth it? To risk it to get the biscuit. To get the biscuit. That was a mouthful of words. It took me a lot to say. That. Say it real fast. Risk it to get the biscuit. Risk it to get the biscuit. Brisket. <laughs> I feel like I'm finna say risk it. I'm brisket. I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Somebody bring some brisket to the studio. Don't forget the A1 sauce, please. I'm please. hungry. Like, I, I feel like I still have a lot to, to learn about the different cues and social cues of, of dating women. Because of that, like, because they, women know what other women are wanting. And like you're saying, some don't want to be approached. And then there's just, like, sometimes really intense feelings. Or sometimes there's, like, you're dealing with other people's uneased feelings about their own sexualities. The women that I've talked to, I like them. I liked them a lot when I was talking to them. And it was, like, intense for me. Because it was, like, a new feeling that I hadn't recognized before and sometimes I think that maybe either intimidated them or maybe scared them off and Mm. with like guys like yeah they can be like oh now she feeling me too much like I'll back up but usually I know how to play it cool on that end of the spectrum guys are a little bit more predictable I will say that (laughs) I mean no offense I hope to not offend anyone but you can usually know and then once you get to know each other and then it might get more complicated on what they like in a personality or what you like but just coming straight off the bat you know how to come mm. wow that was a wrong string of words no pun intended <laughs> it's a wrong string of words <laughs> some final thoughts on sexuality and dating how do you see yourself five years down the line do you think you ever get to a point where you're like ah, i'm nearing this age my my biological clock or her biological clock is ticking like or where you feel like all right it's time for me to settle down do you think you'll ever feel that if you don't have someone in your life where you force yourself to get to that point or do you do you think you'll just always let it flow throughout your whole life well i can't really speak for what future me will do but present me <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair <laughs> present me is very more of a let it flow individual I don't feel the need to rush it or force it. Mm -hmm. I think that forcing it kind of ruins the spark of things. I also like to become friends with somebody before I actually start dating them. I know that's, like, difficult in this day and age of dating. (laughs) But, Mm -hmm. But it's definitely an aspect of dating that I enjoy exploring is being a friend. Because, like we, like I said earlier, I think that we pay more attention to a person's personality when we're friends than when we are romantically interested in them. Yeah, where you're like, well, I wouldn't have a friend that did this to me. Meanwhile, your man she know you six times this week. You wouldn't yeah. let your friend disrespect you, but then you will let the person you're with disrespect you. It brings me into what your partner's community looks like. Do they have family members are they letting family members disrespect you are they letting their friends disrespect you or come at you it can also stem over to dating and friend groups would you let one of your ex's close friends hit you up 
and be like, hey, girl, I always thought you were cute. She didn't deserve you. It's just so many different areas where disrespect can seep in. But I guess more specifically, family. Does it matter to you that your partner's family likes you or accepts you into their community? Does it matter? Mm -hmm. Would it stop you from dating someone? I don't think it would stop me depending on the circumstance. If your family just, I, I, I like to, I, for the most part, a lot of us come from not the greatest circumstances. So we can't, so in hindsight, if the family is not the greatest family there is, <laughs> but you figured out. You had no control in being born You had that. no control over uh -huh. that. I can understand not wanting to be around them that often. Now, would I like a partner that's family oriented? Yeah, because I grew up an only child, not that big of a family, so it would be nice to have an extra family. But it's not a it's not a necessity. It's not something that I really need. And if but my what if they were like disrespecting you? Like they were like, "Girl, fuck that bitch!" Like, like we. <laughs> You, your ex was better. We like your ex better. And then your partner's just sitting there like, stop saying that about them. I, I love her. And you're just like, even though they're sticking To my up face? To you, I don't know about face, you. Behind your back, maybe even social media. Just like, just a messy family. Just messy. Well, I'm, I never really cared about if people talked about me, for real. But your partner's family? I never cared if people talked about me. That's not, if Did they you talk. Have kids with them? If they talk about me behind my back. I don't care. It's not my business. Unless someone yeah. says it to my face, it's never my business. I Whatever conversation you have with somebody else, it ain't got nothing to do with me for real. You just stay in your grievances, and it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to be upset about every little conversation that somebody done had about me behind my back, I'd probably go insane. Yeah. So if my partner's family got some shit to say behind my back, first of all, you don't need to tell me for real. Like, let it, let it be where it is. But that's so interesting. It is what it is. <laughs> I would like to think, you know, that, like, it wouldn't matter. But when you think about having kids with a person or you think about um, wanting, like, both of your families to coincide for event, family events or for Jesus, like, at the ba most basic part, your wedding. But then if you're you're having kids, you're having... Uh, pets you're creating your own home life with this person and this partner and their family is super messy even if they don't you don't hear it to your face I feel like that just like sets the precedent of the type of characters that you're surrounding yourself with and the more often that you're in that environment it's not going to be good for the relationship well I wouldn't surround myself around them one two if I know that they're talking about me they're not coming around our kids not often they can see them, but they're not going to be, ooh, grandma, granddad. Like, no. <laughs> but then grandma, now granddad. Don't a, but now your kid, the, the kids are having a lesser of an experience for yeah, for and, size as well. And that's why I would hope that I wouldn't get into a situation where my partner's family doesn't like me. Because if they don't like me, we have a conversation anyway. Because what it is that you don't like. Because I would like to have a relationship with y'all since I have a relationship with it your daughter <laughs> yeah, so, it's, it's so what it is let's yeah. figure out what this problem is and have a discussion like adults instead of talking behind each other's back about it so mm -hmm. now if they don't want to have that type of conversation now it's i gotta determine whether or not this person is worth going through that with or not and i don't think it's fair to that person to be broken up with because the circumstances that they were born in wasn't necessarily their fault. Like they didn't, they didn't ask to be here. So what they if were, they're not standing up for you though? How would I know if they're not standing up for me if I'm not there to see it? Well, if they come in back telling you all oh, they they said this and they said that, but it's now years and these family members. What if they're still talking about you years later? Clearly, they're not getting the message. It's not getting through, or uh, it's not getting through enough, or it's not getting through at all. Well, then they probably just, like I said, the family dynamic isn't much of one where it's easy for you to have a conversation with them. And that's not something that you really ask to be in. Like, 
if that family dynamic has always been like that from the day you was born up until now, they ain't going to change their ways just overnight. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> if they don't want to listen, they don't want to listen. Very mature. Now, it's kind of up to you on whether or not you want to be around that or not. But I'm not going to sit here and tell my significant other they can't be around their family. At that point, we starting a cult. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not saying say that. I guess the way I would think about it is I'm not saying don't talk to them. But me personally, I want my partner to stand up for me. And I want you to make it known. <laughs>